Hello? Vitari? How are you? Yeah, so uh, did you did you have the chance to join the past the last uh, office hours? Don't worry if you if you answer in the chat. Sorry, one we, we actually have a guest coming for dinner. It's <laughs> 8 p.m. my time. So um Ooh. I can be on for just a short while. So I'll go ahead and talk for now. Okay. And then, uh, I might have to hop off. But no, I wasn't able to make last week's office hours, unfortunately. Okay, don't worry. Uh, as, as we mentioned, it's optional. So, yeah. yeah. Well, now that I have you, it's just the two of us, I guess. I, um, it's a good opportunity to ask you. I'm currently in interviews with uh, both Tesla and Bloomberg, and I have an on-site with Bloomberg next week on the 22nd, and I'm trying to prepare for that. And just any advice in that that regard would be welcomed <laughs> you know as far as you know yeah. i've been doing my data structures i've been doing all those sorts of things but i know that for an on-site i might get hit with system design and so i didn't know like if i should focus on like how to build twitter you know like exercises like that or should i just be going over the core concepts and that should also prepare me well enough yeah that's a, a great question uh, what, what position are you applying for a uh, software engineer. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, because because my question is more, well, maybe more oriented if you are going to apply to uh, front end, full stack, uh, back end, or more, because it's software engineer. So maybe it's more general, more open. Yeah. Tesla is front end. That, that interview is more front end. So. Okay. Cool. Vanessa's here. Hey, Vanessa. But yeah, okay. so yeah, it's probably more general, I would imagine, this this interview. Okay, so just to give Vanessa a little bit of context, uh, uh, maybe Erin, if you want to to mention that very quickly. Oh, con context to Vanessa. Yeah, I told Vanessa I'm currently in a couple interviews right now with with Tesla and Bloomberg, and those are next. Well, Tesla's is the 26th, and Bloomberg's the 22nd. So Bloomberg's coming up first, but I'm further along in Bloomberg. I just now. Hmm. passed on to a senior software engineer interview I had to take a coding assessment for Tesla and I passed it last week so the Bloomberg one is closer to the finish line I guess it's my my big priority this next week so that's what okay. I was talking to Juan about Vanessa because <laughs> no one was here yet so I was like what should I do you know cool yeah so yeah just to give you some pointers it's good to know that it's like a software engineer in general uh, I would say that hmm, maybe I think that it varies from company to company because at the end some uh, focus more on data structures and algorithms, some other focus on trying to, to focus on like real example type of uh, questions or both challenges. Sure. Uh, so I would say that if you are gonna have a system design interview, uh, maybe you can take Twitter, as you mentioned as, a, as, a, as an example, but maybe you can use any uh, application or, or any website. And I would suggest you to, to maybe to check or to study how things, how a, a flow works in general. Let's say for example, uh, I don't know, a uh, login flow or setting up a uh, flow. It is like trying to uh, explain how uh, you start from the browser, meaning from the client, how 
uh, the front end works in that case, then how do you connect that with the back end and then how the back end or what the backend does in that sense, in that regard, what, what for example, in the login example, uh, let's say it's a Google uh, a login with a Google authentication. So in that case, you can mention how the backend or even the front end, depending on what you want to approach. So how that uh, is connected to a third party that in this case is, is Google, then how did you get back the, the data and then how you report that back to the front end. So I would try to focus on a, on a specific flow and try to cover that how, like very well, how, how it works from start to finish. Okay, yeah. And scalability and obviously like dealing with, with uh, all sorts of things like that as well, if it were to yeah. scale. Okay. Exactly. Uh, from uh, another thing important, I think is that uh, in most of the companies, uh, they talk, they put a lot of focus on the behavioral interview. I'm not sure if you already had that one, like the culture fit interview, maybe with a recruiter or an, uh, or with an engineering manager. Have you had that interview? I think that's going to be a component of this next. I, I have two, two rounds with um, two engineers at a time. So I think that there's going to be a little bit of resume a technical, so I'll probably do some leak code question, you know, and then then behavioral to follow. So yeah, I will do some of that. Okay, cool. Yeah, because because I have seen that that one is like highly important. Of course, the technical part is pretty important, but I think that that this also is is very important. So I'm not sure if you have practiced for that one or not. Well, because at the end, it's basically you have to to be yourself. I I guess that's my take on that. But maybe it's also try good uh, if you can pe prepare some questions in advance uh, for that for that interview. Definitely, uh, definitely. So, for example, ha have you tried like I don't know in Bloomberg on the, or in Tesla? Have you tried checking the careers page? Uh, trying maybe checking the I don't know where they mention vision, mission, all that kind of pages that you can check uh, how the company operates, how the company's culture is. And maybe you can ask questions around that. And I, I know that people will, will like that part because at the end it's like you are engaged with the position, not only for the technical part, but also for the, for the core skills part. I don't like to, to, to say soft skills because it's not soft. So. Totally, totally. I would try to, to focus on that part. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't want to take too much of Vanessa's time either. And as I said, I, I ill-timed this <laughs> in that we have we have our guests here to have dinner. So um, I do have to hop off, unfortunately. But um, th thank you for that. Yeah, I, I will absolutely cover all those bases. And yeah, I'll let you know how it goes, obviously. And, Vanessa, let me know. I just went ahead and I, I saw Mindy's suggestion and I tested it out and it seems to work. When you clear the token, it takes you back to that page. So um, I committed it and I think Mindy's like approving it now or something like that. So we're all good. You are muted. <laughs> no. No. Oh, there sorry. You are. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think uh, Mindy said she just approved it. So that's awesome. Uh, thank you for doing that. Yeah, no, totally. Thank I'm sorry I was behind this week on some of the stuff. So I caught up tonight. So we're all set. Nice. Um, good luck, though, on those interviews. That's so exciting, both of them. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, very, very. It's, it's so scary. It's funny. Like, you feel good and then you someone watches you do something and you're just it's like you forget. It's hilarious. It never fails. But thank you so much. Yeah, oh. we'll see. But um, yeah, good. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, yeah, well, I hope that you all have a good rest of your evening. Sorry, I couldn't stay on very long. And yeah, I'll see you all Sunday. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. I, I took up a lot of space on my own because no one was in the room yet. So I asked a lot of <laughs> bunch of questions and then people joined. So. So. Yeah, but, uh, okay. So, sorry, just one thing. So feel free to ask any questions in the, in the chat if you feel comfortable with.
or maybe oh, okay. in, the, in the job searching chat i know that people will be tend to be very open and, and they will give more feedback to you if you need it definitely and if it's helpful and if and this goes for everybody if you want to practice maybe if you want some mock interviews i can help with that we can we can we can program so we can take some time to to make some some interviews well mock interviews if you Up if you want it cool all right bye y'all have a good rest of your night or weekend yay you too see you in a couple days Thanks, Juan. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hey. Oh. Don't worry. Who's that, Tamara? Sorry, <laughs> right, that's my son. It's like he yeah, has perfect timing. <laughs> that's my niece perfect. Do that too. Just poke the head in <laughs> on the side. <laughs> and I have two children, so I understand. What, what, what's okay. That, so. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> How old are your kids, Juan? Uh, the one is my my daughter is almost five years old, and my son is one year old. Nice. Yeah. Right. Big changes. Oh, yeah. We are happy. Oh, good. Um, Tamara, I don't know if you had any emerging or. Big questions. I don't have that many really, <laughs> but just wanted to hang out probably more so than anything else. Oh my God. Um, yes, of course, me. I have so many. <laughs> I have so many questions because I had an interview and um, it was a coding exercise, which in my mind right now, I am very humble enough to say like, I'm on interviews just to get interview experience. Like I'm really trying to find the right formula, you know, how to show up, how to present myself. And I know it's its own study almost. Like you, I need like a interview module to study because interviews are very, um, it's almost like a Rubik's cube. Like you really have to find the right formula to be chosen in my eyes. So um, my question was definitely coding exercises. Um, the last interview I did, they had made up their own um, language that was similar to React and using ES6. And to me, she was she was like, take us, you know, review the code. We're just going to ask you to modify a couple of things. And I'm like, OK, I got this, you know. <laughs> But it was like formatted in a different way. They used lightning. So whatever that was, they used lightning. And that was the actual syntax. So she was asking me, how would you add a class to this? And I went blank. So I know how to do it, of course. But I don't know. I definitely feel like I'm going to have to reinvest time in JavaScript. Um, which is fine, but I just didn't know so much time was put into proving you could do the work, you know? So um, yeah, it's like a huge time investment for me. Um, but I guess out of all of that, <laughs> would you say that, because what, what my dilemma is, is trying to get a job quickly. Um, my options would be to look for interns, apprenticeships, or to go the IT route um, and maybe get a help desk position um, as like a super duper like foundation, low barrier entry way to get started because I really wanted a change like really soon. <laughs> so um, I'm like either invest more into my web development journey, you know, really hone in on JavaScript or Maybe I could go a quicker route, like a shortcut and go IT, go help desk or something like that. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks for, <laughs> no, 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 thanks for sharing that. And I think that, yeah, I, I understand that because I guess that you have more experience with React, right, in, in frameworks. So, I, I would say that it, it's fine that you know React and you don't know like JavaScript well enough yet because at the end you are gonna learn that with the with the job. 
for example, in the in the university, I studied I studied not computer science because in Colombia we didn't have a computer science by that time. By that time, but we had something called uh, systems engineering. I'm not sure if that's a career in the U.S. But anyways, it, it is like more open. So it is like you you learn a lot of, a lot of stuff of stuff related to computers, not only programming. So the thing is that when I started uh, uh, working like in a, in, a, in a real job, basically I threw away everything that I learned at the university. Well, I, I, I had some, some learnings from there, but at the end it, it was like, I had to start basically from zero because one, one thing was what I learned before and one thing different was what I what I learned after I started uh, uh, working, like in, in my first uh, position. So I would say that it's fine uh, about that, and uh, I I would encourage you to to continue trying the the developer path because I know that even that it's hard these days to to find a, a the first job. I know that there, there are a lot of openings right now, still, even with that. And in the case, for example, if I understand that in, in that company, they used a line, what is it? And at the end, it's web components. So it's lining, it's one thing from uh, Salesforce. Maybe something that you could try, because at the end, interviewing in some, in some sense is practicing. You can, you can do some inter interviews by practicing. Maybe you can try asking or saying maybe, hey, I don't, I don't know how exact how this works exactly, but I can search and I can, I can understand that, I can grasp, grasp that, and maybe I can implement what you are trying to, 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 to do in, in, in that challenge. So maybe you can ask if you can search because at the end, search is also another skill that we have to learn while working. So maybe you could that that's one recommendation. You could try that. There will be some interviewers that interviewers that won't like that that, some others that are okay with that. So it's like you can try and see what happens. Because at the end, and, and that's something that, that I said to someone in a in a like maybe two weeks ago, that uh, when you start in this career, we don't expect that you have to, to know everything. I think that we expect expect more than the, than you are like completely like open to, to learn that you have like the like a attitude to to learn and to, to be flexible enough. So I think that if you show that, I think that's that's more important than that if you know an exact how an API works because that's something that you will end up learning at some point. So don't worry about that. So go on, try to, to continue pursuing this because I, I know that is, is worth it. And I, I can tell you that if you continue with this path, it will be like very good. And that this is my personal opinion, but I, I would go with that. Again, if you want to practice, I'm here to, to help with that. Okay, yes, definitely. Um even though I just got a voucher for a, um, a tech course, <laughs> like I'm just ready to pull the parachute. But no, I definitely think it's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's just so much, you know, little investments that go into it. It's just like, wow. But um, yeah, that was great advice, Juan. I'll definitely keep at it and like chip away. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I've been to plenty of like meetups and stuff where, even higher managers will just stress, like I can teach anyone to code, but if you have the tenacity and the, you know, like if you just have the other traits that I can't teach, you know, that's who I'm looking for. So I do know that they find other things valuable than the skill itself. So mm -hmm. I do understand that. So that's where I'm like, okay, this is where I would have to find the right company who accepts that type of, you know, go-getter where they do feel like this is an investment because she can problem solve at least, you know? Mm -hmm. So I do get it. That definitely made perfect sense to me. So um, I'll, I'll keep at it. 
Sure. Okay, great. By the way, this, this is something that I, uh, now that you mentioned the internships, I asked at my current company if, if they, they, they are hiring uh, interns that come from, uh, from a different background or that, that come from uh, boot camps. I still have to check with someone else because it's the person like that is in charge of that part. Because I know that for summer, we already, have, we already have covered all the internships for the company. But I will ask to see if the, what's fall, maybe it's after. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. how internships work in the US yet. So okay. I'm going to ask that. And maybe I'll let you know to everybody about that to see if there are opportunities there. Oh, well, thank you, Juan. Yeah, until then, like, I'll just keep honing in on this, on what I do know, which is the foundations and, you know, connecting things. So, um, yeah, definitely. That helps a lot. Um, Juan, do you know any companies in particular that are maybe more open to kind of like those entry level positions? Because I do feel like I find on like job search, like first off, a lot of them, it's like senior position, senior position, <laughs> like you need to know all this stuff. And I know I've, I've been hurt. I've been told like, oh yeah, you don't have to have all the skills. Um, but I mean, I feel like I have applied to places where it's like, yeah, I don't have the skills. And then I don't hear anything back. Cause it's like, yeah, your entry level, mm -hmm. there's all these candidates that do have those skills. Mm -hmm. So even though people say like, ah, oh, the skills don't matter. Like if you are in a big pool, sometimes it might. Um, but I feel like there are companies out there that it's like they do want to build up their workforce. And so like they're more willing to um, take sort of those entry level boot camp grads. Um, do you know any off the top of your head or if there's I bet there's li maybe there's lists out there that people have created? Because um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I f first of all, are you already part of the job searching uh, channel in in our Slack community? I think I just joined that actually because maybe um, Andrew had said something about it this week. Yeah, job searching, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. So we usually tend to, to post any, you know, tweets or positions that we see that is for early career developers. So keep an eye on that one because in there, maybe maybe if you check there, you will see some companies that, that have positions for or are open to hire early career engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, top of my mind, yeah, you know, that is hard. I don't remember exactly when right now, but I will check that and I'll, I'll maybe I'll share that with you um, or maybe I'll CC you in, the, in that channel to, to see if I remember some, some opportunities. Maybe, uh, well, I would say that remote companies would be more open like fully, fully, fully distributed companies. So something that comes top of my mind, maybe, I don't know, Webflow, Netlify, uh, what else? Uh, I don't know if Sapier, I haven't checked, to be honest. I would check with Andrew, he's very open. You want to check or maybe I can check with him. If you feel more confident about that. Um, what else? Uh, but yeah, I have to check because there are so many companies, but I have to, maybe New Relic too. And I know that Mindy works there, so. Nice. And then um, I was, a question formatted in my mind when we've been talking about interviews. Um, I feel like maybe similar um, to Taryn and like Tamara of like, you get in there and it's like, yeah, you know, like if I was coding alone, like I could figure this out, but suddenly like someone's watching and like you forget things. Um, and I get, yeah, I probably just need to like practice more. Um, but I wonder, I don't know if you've ever been the interviewer um, of like entry-level developers, but I think maybe what might calm my nerves if they're like, maybe things we can be communicating while we're coding. So like, even if we get stuck, like, is it helpful to say things like, yeah, I'm blanking right now or, ooh, yeah, I know I know this. Generally I would like look here or um, yeah, I don't know if, or yeah, are there things that we can do to like mitigate the like, oh my gosh, I just like froze. Um, but 
maybe I can show you that I communicate well, that I'm curious, that I know how to search things. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it makes total sense. And that's a, a good question because it's basically what you said. It's, uh, do you, I would say that if you are in that type of uh, interview that is coding challenges, it's better. This is again, my, my personal opinion. Uh, and by the way, I've been interviewed in that way. And I have also interviewed uh, developers from different uh, positions, from different seniority levels. So I would say that, yes, it's important that before you jump into the code or into the solution, try speaking out loud what you, you are trying to what you are trying to do. So that's, that's really important in the sense that people will see how you solve that, uh, that problem. Because at the end, there are moments where you cannot solve the, the problem itself, but we try to see more on the process on how you get there or how you try to get there. So it is like, it doesn't matter. Of course, it's great if you solve that, but if not, if you show your, uh, talks like your, basically your talk process about how you would solve that so first uh try checking everything maybe also uh, before uh, coding or maybe you can start writing in, in, in the in the like the live coding uh, website i don't know which one but the one that you are using for that test try maybe uh like commenting like adding comments about what you are gonna do. So maybe, for example, if you start, let's say, uh, I don't know, like um, uh, the challenge is an array, it's you have an array and you have to sort the elements alphabetic, uh, alphabetically. So you start like saying how you are going to solve it. So for example, I'm going to uh, create a, a loop and I'm going to check the first letter. So when, when you are saying that out loud, Try to add comments in the code, like in, in the in the in the in the browser. So this is what I'm gonna do in in where in, in the sense of like just adding comments, and then try implement implementing that. So at the end, you will have the solution, or you will have the the, the function that does that, and you will have everything commented. So that's something that uh, that they will, the interviewers will will see in a positive way. Uh, if you get stuck at some point, again, it depends on the interviewer. There are some that are like, oh, sorry, that's it. Or they try to finish earlier the, the, the interview. And there are some other interviewers that prefer this way that are, they try to give you clues on how to, 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 be, how to unlock yourself from that. So maybe they give you some clues, so maybe, have you tried this approach or have you thought about this and then maybe you can start trying to communicate and having like a two-way channel with the person with the interviewer so both can like get to a, a with a better solution so that's something that try to do i would by yourself if not try asking questions so maybe you can also oh this is another thing you maybe have some initial assumptions. And if you have some assumptions, it's better to ask questions about that. So it's like, hey, what is the idea of this to do X or Y? So maybe try asking questions about the, the purpose of the problem. So that will also help you to, or help the interviewer to see that you ask questions before you get into a solution. And then again, that's where the communication starts. And I think that's important because at the end, you. You show how how you can work in a in a team and how you you can work uh, like with a pair. So that's what I I remember. Um, and then one last question I had is more about um, learning sort of broader topics like system design and sort of like architecture stuff um, because. I guess I've been told like, oh yeah, as a junior like developer, you're not going to really be expected to know much about that, um, about systems design. Um, but I'm actually, so I have a part-time job that I do. 
Um, and I feel like my web development skills, you know, like are useful, but honestly knowing tools like Docker um, and like containerization and GitHub actions, like all those like continuous integration, continuous deployment, like strategies are like super important actually. Um, and so I'm trying to think like, what should be like, like how should I start learning and like educating myself about those things? Cause on the job, like, yeah, my boss will tell me one thing and it's like, all right, I'll implement one thing, but I'm not getting like this big picture. Um, so I guess I'm, I guess I'm wondering generally how do entry develop entry level developers like start gaining those skills in a like strategic way? Um, and how my eyes start, like, are there good like LinkedIn courses maybe, or um, I don't know, Udemy courses or books? Um, would you recommend like, yeah, I don't know. It's like such a big field. I don't know. It's like, yeah, dive into Docker, like get Docker down or um, Jenkins or what, all these other like DevOps like tools, like what, um, if you have any advice on that, that'd be really helpful. Okay, about like system design, in type of interviews or more like learning the skills? Um, like I think like not just for like the interviews, but like practical skills. Cause it's like, okay. yeah, I'll be in a meeting like where they're like, all right, we're going to talk about how to, yeah, architect the system. How do you think we should design this database? And like, I don't know. Like, um, yes, there seems to be this like bigger kind of like architecture conversation yeah. they want to be able to enter into. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. First, I think that it's great if you understand the big picture, but if you are trying to understand the big picture, you don't necessarily be or have to go too deep into the into the tech part. Uh -huh. I would say you don't need to start on that. For example, if you, you don't need to learn, uh, for example, Docker or Kubernetes, if you if your field of expertise is another so don't try to learn everything at the at the beginning yeah i would suggest you just to learn like good enough because there are a lot of things to to know and a lot of libraries a lot of you know languages like everything so it is more like you i recommend you to understand like what are you trying to solve what is the feature that you are trying to build? You can start from that. So it is like uh, taking the, the same example that, that, that I took with, with Darn, that was uh, login flow, or yeah, sign up, sign up, sign in flow in a, in a website. Uh, it is like you start asking is how many users do we currently have? So depending on that question is how, how do we need to scale this up? Is that, do we need to worry about that right now? Maybe we can leave that for later. Let's say that it's a website that is, it has a traffic of, I don't know, uh, 500 users, daily users. So that's, that's small. So at the end, you don't need to worry about uh, scaling up the server. You just need a, a small server, a small hosting. You, you can handle a, Small database for that because there are not too many transactions or daily tra or parallel transactions. So it is something that, okay, you can start small. So you don't need, for example, at that point, you don't need Kubernetes, you, you don't need uh, Docker, you can, or maybe Docker, if you want to start with a container, with an image, just to configure the environment. But it's not something that needs to be that way. So this is like the first thing. How many users? Then you can start from from there. Uh, then, for example, hey, for the login, do you want to uh, use our own login system? Meaning that, for example, do we need do we want to uh, allow users to uh, enter an email, uh, username, password, all that stuff, and they will uh, log in using those credentials or do we want to support google do we want to support facebook do we, and you start asking those those questions depending on on the answers that you get from the uh, product people or, or the project management because that's what uh, with uh, the people that uh, you have conversation usually so it is like then depending on that you start 
defining how you are how you are gonna tackle that. So then you will start like collecting requirements of that. So it is like, okay, this login system will have this feature, this feature, it won't have this one, this one. And then based on, on some other assumptions that you will uh, communicate with the, with the rest of the team. So you can then start planning how you will build that. So, and then, and then okay, so we are using these frameworks for front end. We already have this framework in the company, or we don't have, we don't use frameworks. So can I propose this one? Um, same for goes for backend. So it is like, uh, it's basically the same. So trying to, to uh, first define what you are gonna do, then based on that, on, on the initial requirements, you will start defining the technical part. Mm -hmm. So not sure if you, you saw that or if you know that before, but maybe that's the way that I do it. I know that there will be different ways depending on each person, but uh, it's, it's been working for me so far. So yeah. That's good. And now, yeah. Well, and now that I'm in, in a company that has a, a big number of users, I have learned more stuff. And to say this to, to both of you is that uh, I've been uh, for uh, a good number of years in the industry. And I'm learning a ton of, of stuff about architecture in this company. So this is not in my first uh, position and I'm still learning because this is a different problem. This is a different field. We have different set of users. So I would say that start learning about architecture. Uh, you need to learn about everything. Maybe you, it's good that you understand the big picture, but you don't know to, you don't know to learn or to know about everything from the technical aspect. So you can start small. For example, you can start on front end or back end or maybe some full stack, but try to, to, to keep like a, a tight scope. And then with the experience, you can grow that scope. Mm. At some point, maybe you can uh, go through a path. Maybe you can uh, specialize in front end or in back end, but at the end, you can have another set of skills that can help you complement what you are special, specializing in. So yeah, that's my advice. Nice, thank you. Um, Tamir, if you had any other questions too, feel free to jump in. I think those are all mine. Um, yeah, I definitely think like <laughs> what you were asking was just like, what is a specialty to add on that even boot camps don't prepare you for? And for me, like as soon as you said it, I thought about testing and debugging. Like I know we're not equipped or maybe it's such a broad topic that, you know, it's literally like an extra, you know, study as well, like to test or to debug. Cause you know, you're joining companies with built code. So you know, you are, you're already getting into the flow or the stream of things. So I'm sure finding the bug would be like your main thing to do anyway. But yeah, so um, that's just where my mind went to on like the extra equipment you needed to, to, to actually do like an everyday job um, versus create brand new web pages, you know, that we're equipped to do. So, um, but yeah, I definitely think that when it comes to niching I um I, I would I'm now like just being so shameless and applying <laughs> like if I see one thing on there and it's I don't even care if it's a DevOps job but if I see CSS I'm like oh that's me let me apply <laughs> let me apply <laughs> but um yeah I'm trying to just take another step like of being spontaneous as the companies are because maybe whoever's typing the the you know the description might not know what it's supposed to be you know so I'm just trying to really just fish out like just cast my net wide and you know um just you know trickle down and just if I could chance you know a good job then that's what I'll do and I also will use the job description as my resume. Like I, I know when people say, oh, tailor your resume, but I'm like, I don't know what that means. I, I, but I really look at the description and like make sure my resume, you know, matches up. I think that's just me. 
translating, tailoring. So yeah. Um, (laughs) But other than that, yeah, I definitely think like um, I, I know what I'm like niched in, like I know what I like to do, but you know, I do be, I, I am pretty spontaneous, like jumping in if I don't know everything um just to see you know if maybe they'll take that as a plus as well like she doesn't even know it but she applied anyway we like the confidence get in here you know (laughs) so it's just like I'm just trying to find any little edge I can get to really you know show and prove um just making that first impression so yeah um but definitely testing would be my next venture um just to be my little bonus or you know how they have like preferred or bonus maybe that would be my bonus um that I'll get into next but yes I definitely get that that's cool yeah and you know that yeah testing is a another subject it's it's really cool I mean I'm like pro testing there are there is some people that don't like getting tests but it's like up for Depends on the company and depends on uh, on the person. Yeah, I think that in our team we are big fans of testing. If you have again, if you have any questions, we can, uh, we can help with that. With especially with uh, testing in React, I can help you with the like libraries or maybe like good like practices to follow around testing. Um, I totally agree with you on the interviewing part about applying to something that you feel or you think that you are not prepared for. Because at the end, I think that we as humans, we tend to not apply to some positions that we feel that we are not good enough. That, and that's a, that happened to me. So that's why I'm, I'm telling that. And I feel that sometimes the, the, the companies will hire you if you if they see that even that you don't feel all the items in the checklist they, they will hire you if, if they see that you have some skills that they are looking for because sometimes when you see some job descriptions that i agree that it's good to to define the, the your cv based on that uh, sometimes i feel that those uh, descriptions are like templates so it is like most of the companies have the same template and sometimes they, they put some items in there just yeah, because it's like the standard, it's the industry standard, but sometimes they, they don't really need some exact skill in that list. So that's why I think that it's good to apply for those positions because at the end, you don't never know. For example, as an example, uh, in, in, my, uh, in, my, in my current job, I applied because I saw that someone posted that position in, in Twitter, and, uh, and and I saw that I, uh, I I checked most of the boxes and the technical skills that they needed. But uh, to be honest, I, I didn't think that they were gonna choose me because because I knew that the competition was like really hard and it was hard to to, to get in, to get that position. And I said like, well, let's do it. I'm not gonna lose everything anything. So. I'm just gonna do it. And, and the funny part is that I, I was already applying to a different position and I just did this. It's not, it's up to you if you want to do it or not. I, this is not a, an advice. I accepted the other position thinking that my company was not gonna uh, send me an offer. So I accepted the other company. Then uh, I passed all the of the interviews with with Ken Academy, and then they they told me that they they were gonna send me an offer, and I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> and you see, I, I didn't think that they were gonna choose me. So it's like try to apply to everything that you see because you never lose anything. You just can and try the the worst part is that they will tell you no, and then you move on. So yeah, go for it. And thanks for that. Thanks to that, I'm where I'm at right now. And, I, and I'm pretty happy about that. So mm-hmm. continue applying to Thanks. decisions that you feel that you are not good enough, but that's life. Yeah. 
Yeah, I wanted to definitely piggyback off of um, <laughs> what Vanessa said. Like, if if you try to like an interview and they're like just chop you, like, nope, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, it, it's definitely like humbling like oh my god what did I do you know so it's it's almost like you like for me like I said I'm just running through just to honestly get conditioned to hear no a lot like and really just continue in a non-emotional way you know to just keep going because it's almost like looking at it as the cup is half full all the time even though you know it could be really cutthroat and like you know they could really like hit your ego like you don't know what you're doing (laughs) you know so it's just like um I'd rather just you know um like she said play up the other skills that I'm just in here just the chance you know and with them understanding that how industry like competitive the industry is too I would think that they would just get so exhausted like we just want somebody who's confident enough to apply like you know so even if they don't think they're they're gonna get in at least they tried so I'm just at that point that it could be possible to get in um, outside of your skill set so um, but I did have um, like before um, we we get off um, I did have like a weird question about recruiter tactics because the recruiters are like it's almost sometimes it's hard to tell if they're legit or not because they could come from like anywhere in the world and find your resume maybe if you threw it up on Indeed or Zip Recruiter and it's like they could call you and say, oh, in order for me to submit you, I need your, so, you know, the the last four of your social security number. And I'm like, wait, we've only been talking for 30 minutes or, you know, 15 minutes. Now you want my, my, um, my social security number. So that was a weird um, approach for me, but I was wondering if you could get like a contracted job, like a legit job through recruiters, just charging at you and throwing you in a submission and then you end up getting the offer I didn't know if that is how it works um no no yeah that that that, that was weird because yeah (laughs) yeah yeah, thanks for sharing because they asked you for the for your social insurance number that's right well it was it was an email first I get a lot of emails they're like pretty random but they have job descriptions like hey I'm from this company I end up like searching their names on LinkedIn to really see if they're real people you know I try to do like a little background research as well but yeah they'll just say could we contact you could you send us your resume if so I would love to inform you further about the position okay you get on the phone and then it's like oh, everything sounds great. Everything matches up. I'm ready to submit you, but I would need your legal name, your date of birth, and the last Mm. four or three of your social to like, you know, seal the deal type of thing. Mm. Um, That's weird. Something that I, well, first, if if I remember correctly, it's illegal to ask your date of birth in most of the states in the U.S., so, so, for example, they cannot ask you the, the date of birth, uh, your gender, your um, um, salary. So there are some, there is some information that y- they cannot ask you. So you can say no. Or, and I think that maybe the social insurance number, well, well maybe if it was the last numbers, maybe, maybe, I'm just guessing, so maybe yeah. it's that they are trying to perform a security check or something like that before uh, moving you to the to the with the company. I don't know. That's my only guess. But uh, yeah, okay. uh, 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 in, if it was my case, I would try not to give that information. So maybe I would try to ask why they need that information because it's a bit shady, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, usually uh, recruiters, what they ask for uh, from you is just your CV, and then usually they move you to the hiring manager. But in that case, usually it's the recruiting manager, and then you move to the uh, through the process, and at the end, the person that 
usually gives you the offer if you get an offer. It's for the hiring manager, that is the engineering manager, or the recruiter sometimes. But I think that usually the recruiter is the one that makes the initial connections. But the rest of the, like the information, that for example, if they need your uh, date of birth and all that information is once you sign an offer and then they need that data just to, to you know, to all the forms that needed for the, for the company or something and all that stuff and not before. So I would definitely ask about that, why they need that. Yeah. Yeah, but that was. Okay. <laughs> Okay, definitely. I, and then being like, you know, an entry level, you kind of don't know the tactics or the formal way to get mm -hmm. assessed it out, especially for contracts. Like if they're like, oh, we just would like your services for a year or two. It's like, oh, we're, we're going this route. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's uh, okay. I, I, I definitely um, gave her a fake number. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just to see like I'm, I'm definitely in like a um, experimental state where it's like not that serious but I would like to see maybe to tell someone else beware you know yeah. so um, yeah yeah and, and at the end you will have more opportunities to apply for so maybe better to, to move on okay or ask the question and they, yeah. they will answer and you will see if the answer is honest or, or not. You will decide based on that, but yeah. Definitely. Okay, yeah, again, great advice. That was, that was really helpful. Cool. Yeah, it was helpful from hearing from both of you. I feel like you both motivated me because there are definitely times, like in all honesty, it's like, like I think you said to me, I'm pulling, pulling the parachute, like exiting. <laughs> like all right yeah maybe this is for me. going back to teaching uh, but um uh yeah it helps and I, especially Juan what you were saying that, like you keep learning it like there's no way you can learn all about everything you know about architecture I've been trying to say to in my mind I used to say this as a teacher or I heard it in teaching when you teach writing to kids you want to do whatever you can just to get them to write the next paper so like you don't want to slam them right with like comments on stuff it's like what's going to excite them so that tomorrow they write again and again so i try to say that it's like what do i need to do today so that i code tomorrow maybe it's take a break and like eat some chocolate <laughs> and like that's what i actually need right now um so yeah it reminded me of that when you guys were saying that so thank you for the encouragement nice yeah so you know that's that's the idea and, and that's i think that's what these uh, office hours are it's like a, an open chit chat so we can talk about, about anything that you want it's great that that we end up talking about this today so yeah i mean of course if you have more questions about that or about anything different i'm happy to to, to chat about that so um yeah, not, I don't know if you have more, have more questions or more topics that you want to chat about. I didn't have any questions except um, if you have a React testing, you said you mentioned you use testing libraries. If you have any recommendations, I'd love to like start looking into those because yeah, it's all sure. me. Of course. So uh, there are two big libraries right now. The one that is most used right now, it's called React Testing, React Testing Library. And the other one is Enzyme. That's from Airbnb. That was the one uh, used widely before the, the, the first one. But that was used by like everybody a, lot, uh, a couple of years ago. Then uh, React Testing Library it started appearing maybe two years ago, and now most of the people use this one. So I would suggest, yeah, React Testing Library, because that's the, the one that the industry uses the most these days. Uh, you can, I don't know, for example, you can use this project as an experiment. You can start writing tests there. 
if you feel confident and if you feel curious about that, or maybe if you have another project, another repository, you can try there too. If you need help with a name, uh, maybe I can give you, I can, I can send you some links about like introduction for testing with those libraries and for testing in general. Yeah, that'd be again, awesome. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll send you that in the in the in the channel. In cool. A few minutes. Yeah, and again, any questions? I'm happy to answer. Or I know that Lyle or Mindy will help with that too. If we don't know, there will be more people that that will know. <laughs> Great that we are a network. So yeah. Yeah, um, I know that um, with Mindy's office hours, um, she posted this uh, cyberdojo.org because she brought it up. She actually really likes testing. And she was like, she wished that that was a part of Collab Lab, but she did understand within the time frame and like what the project, you know, involved, like the teamwork. Sorry. Um, um, but yeah, she was, she just posted that for like practicing, testing. Um, yeah. And so hopefully you could find that useful. Um, Did you check it out? Did you like it? Um, no, <laughs> I'm kind of intimidated by it, honestly. <laughs> so <laughs> just to like make sure I have like console log <laughs> down packed <laughs> as my um, testing. But yeah, I was really trying to understand, like you said, the big picture of testing as well, because it seems like not an accessibility type of thing, but a buffer in a way that everyone knows that the, that the project works. So that's what I'm trying to process that testing is before even diving into actual practicing and stuff. But um, I would say my, my last little question would be, um, Oh my God, if we could get together and like fix the the token in the code, that would be like amazing. But it doesn't have to be now or anything. I'll probably tinker with it and maybe I'll level up in React by figuring it out. <laughs> well, I think uh, I have to, we have to merge, Taryn and I need to merge our branch first, right? Because then your code won't work without, because we're setting the token in local storage. So the code that I'd given me, like commented on you all's will only work unless there's a token stored in local storage, if that makes sense. Let me, I'll, oh, uh, I have another meeting like right after this that I have to hop into, no, but then fine. in an hour I can do the merge to main so that that way. But Okay, well, I honestly don't want to do anything without Adam <laughs> because, you know, like I said, I just like with me and you, like I could definitely contribute, you know, but where you code, it's almost like I would rather you lead the issues on your portion or maybe we just share that experience together, you know, like how you added like the delete button. So say if they were like, oh my God, the delete button's crashing, you know, and I would rather, if you weren't here, I'd rather you be here with me and be like, Vanessa, maybe we just miss it a letter, <laughs> you know, yeah. if that was the case. But um, but yeah, I just kind of want to wait until Adam's here, but I, um, I at least want to understand what's going on with what he wrote because it is in his style, but, um, and it was more of, his um, contribution, not mine, but, um, and I, I don't know about merging and maybe if I overwrite it or something, I don't know what could, what else could go wrong, but <laughs> I'll tinker with it, but I'll definitely um, learn what I actually need help with, with that to like ask for help. But right now I just, I'm like mayday. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, no worries. But I think it will help you. Yeah, once I merge this other branch in, that'll help. Should I approved it, but I don't know if. Yeah, I think Mindy approved it. So it's good to go. And Adam had said, like, you guys go ahead and merge first. That way, then you you and Adam can look over and make sure everything works. Um, okay. Yeah, with your changes. Yeah, sounds great. Okay. We got this. <laughs> right. Uh, that's amazing. 
I guess I can cool down now. I mean. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that because I, I agree that once uh, you, Vanessa, merge the, the, the pull request in master, you will try merging that into, into your branch mm -hmm. and you'll see how that works. I don't want to, yeah, to give more like another solution because I, I know that you are learning how to merge stuff oh. <laughs> with master. So I think that it's better if you keep it that way. But if you have any questions about master or once you need to merge that, maybe you can ask the questions and we can help there too. Okay. Uh, so yeah, 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 I, yeah, let's leave it that way <laughs> because I, I don't want to, to confuse you. Oh, that, yeah, I, I think that it, it's great that you, you will use the, the code that you will see in master. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, and, and it's interesting hearing like there's so many ways to do it. Even you could shortcut it and we just like copy and paste what you guys had in your team to our code and we just merge it all together, you know, and it was just like, I, I was telling Adam, like he was just definitely like, let's just copy and paste it. And I'm like, well, you could do that with the whole project, but that's not, you know, how, why we're using GitHub, <laughs> you know, but I'm like, I'll wait until maybe we all can get together to have an understanding because he was like let's just copy and paste it and we won't have any conflicts and I'm like I think we need the conflicts conflicts are healthy <laughs> you know <laughs> so yeah, it was good, really yeah, interesting I mean, yeah so I was like let's just learn how to mess it up first yeah <laughs> so yeah um, I'll just wait but yeah, I'll, I'll see if I could find a solution, maybe in a separate file or just separately. And then we could understand how the team fixes the issue, you know? All right, I have to jump off actually, but- um, Okay, I didn't want to hold you up. <laughs> I'll see okay. you later. Bye. Okay, bye Vanessa. Bye. Okay, so, so yeah, maybe, maybe try merging that. And uh, maybe if you have any questions, ask in the channel and we, we can help you with that. So don't worry, uh, at the end okay. you can, whatever you do, you can uh, and do that, or you can find a way to revert those changes. So don't worry if you mess the, the branch because at the end it's something that you can, it's the magic of it that you can do anything you want. Okay. Don't yeah, worry about that. Yeah, even when breaking it, it's certain things that I wanna learn about like rebase, like I have no idea what that means. I'm kind of just scared to mess up GitHub in order not to use like an escape or an undo. I really just like, if I learned how to do commit and add, that's just what I really want to do. I don't want to mess up anything when committing and adding. So yeah, I, I guess I can, I can definitely wait. Um, like I said, I just wanted to get a general idea of should we do it, you know, a professional way or, you know, like he said, let's just shortcut it and just <laughs> keep it happy, yeah. you know? So, um, yeah, so yeah I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to Sunday um, and definitely speaking with Adam um, about it more just to make sure that as a team member, he's included, you know? So, um, yeah. and he can yeah. learn what he needs to learn from the situation. So, um, yeah, definitely. Oh, and I forgot to mention something at the beginning. So for, for, for this meeting, we are going to have the demos at the beginning. Then we are going to have retros or retrospectives. This will be our, our first one. I have to, I'm going to send the message about that right away to explain what's that. So yeah, I forgot to mention that. that it, but it's basically, do you know what a retro is? Retrospective? Like your point software? of view? No, oh, it is more like software. it is more like uh, when you finish a cycle. At least, for example, you finished a, a cycle of two weeks. <laughs> the idea is that we we have a new uh, GitHub project next mm -hmm. to the one that where we defined the stories. This is a different project where we discuss as a team three different things. So one is what went well, what can be improved, and what didn't go well. So the idea is that anyone 
it's completely optional, but it gave you that we can add uh, like uh, stories to say that or cards mentioning what you think went well and what you think that can be improved and so on. So that the idea with this is that for the next iteration, we will try to fix these things that, uh, that can be done in a different way or we can continue doing what we are doing well. So that, that's the idea like to, to give like a, um, an overview or your opinion, your personal opinion on how the project is going. So that's the idea of that. Okay, it, yeah, it sounds like a survey um, on like maybe what you could, your input or your observation um, on how to improve. Yeah, it sounds great. Um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely look forward to that portion. So, um, and then getting more detail, I guess, how we will do that after the demo demonstrations. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it will be, you know, definitely um, um, helpful for us to be able to say like, oh, you know, we're doing great or this needs to improve. So yeah, I, I love that it's a segment in for Sunday. So yeah, awesome. Cool, yeah, so yeah, I told you that. So yeah, yeah. I forgot to <laughs> mention that earlier, but yeah. I'll try to, to give right. more details in the in the channel. Okay. And yeah, so ask any questions about the, the merge. If you have, don't worry. Okay. We are there to help. We're gonna send the, the links for testing and I'm gonna try to remember which companies uh, are hiring uh, early career developers and I'm gonna post that too in the in the channel. So that's where I remember okay. that, like my action items. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem at all. Thank you so much, Juan, with meeting with us. Yeah, same, same. It was it was really nice to meet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Okay. So I hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Sunday. You too. Okay. okay. See you. All right. Bye. bye.